Collision did 400,000 and a point one zero, which of course is quite bad. It's the lowest collision number ever without WWE competition. But they did have that playoff game on Peacock, which uh, did allegedly 23 million viewers and was said to be the most streamed event in all of history. That's what they said. That's what they said. Yeah, I'm sure they did. It's just a silly, stupid move. One that benefited wrestling fans who only have Peacock to watch WWE. I guess if they're also NFL fans, they scored one there. But a completely ridiculous thing to do in a lot of ways for a lot of different reasons for me to go ahead and do that. 20 million people. Imagine what it could have been if everybody got a chance to see it. This is what I worry about when it comes to wrestling being on these streaming services when it gets right down to it. Is it really going to be beneficial at this at this juncture? Because I can see in the future, again, things changing, things consolidating, and this being regular television. But we are not there yet. And I'm very interested if Say WWE goes on to WBD and Tony's got to look elsewhere to do things. Or say Raw gets picked up and is put on Amazon. How much that's really going to affect things? A lot of people have their opinions both ways, but we really don't know what it's going to be. It doesn't matter one bit. If Raw Raw on uh, on Peacock or on on Amazon Prime, if they get like 50,000 viewers a week, it don't matter. Because I'm going to tell you why. Because do you know how much they're going to make from Amazon Prime? But here's the thing. I, They'll I know probably make a that. billion dollars. What about the next time, though? Well, what about the they next have, deal, then, when you don't have that chip of Raw because they have, it's been so badly damaged at them? They have SmackDown on, on USA, NXT and they have NXT on, on everyone's C-Dub. favorite network, the C-Dub. Yeah. So they can, uh, they can sacrifice Raw to Amazon Prime to make, like, bro, it's going to be Brian, a ridiculous th- they, a ridiculous and, amount of and money. And they're going to have to because you see how the market responded to TKO and what they think about TKO right now after the last deal. So I can see them going for that money. But I wonder if it's, again, we'll find out if it's that's a short-term decision that ends up burning them a little bit a couple of years later. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, two things here. First off, a decade ago, I thought three hours of Raw was going to kill that show. Here we are, it's 2024. I'd rather it was two hours. But take out the NFL. I mean, this is your number one show on television. I mean, the reason it's only second mind SmackDown is because SmackDown's on Fox, which it won't be next year. And uh, the fact of the matter is, if they go to Amazon Prime, it's going to be, I would predict, 450 to $500 million a year for that show. And... Yeah. And someone here asked, which is a great question, well, if they go to Amazon Prime, like the whole point of Amazon Prime is to, uh, you know, get subscribers to, to, to pay to watch whatever's on there. So it doesn't need to be three hours. Why does it have to be three hours? They're not paying for hourly content like they are on cable. They're paying for uh, the yes, content. Are. They're they're kind of paying for hours though. They they want minutes and and that all of that stuff adds up. So in a way, they may very well want three hours just because it's going to drive up. In theory, it's going to drive up how they view their again how they view their audience and how their audience is recorded. Well, maybe. But if you remember when WWE was on the WWE Network, they had those pay per views. And they started doing that deal where every freaking pay-per-view had to be three and a half, four and a half hours long. Why? Because they wanted to, to do all the, well, you know, WWE fans streamed X amount of programming on the network, which they then, by the way, used to get like a preposterous deal from Peacock. Ridiculous, yeah. the deal they got. Absolutely. But you know what happened on Peacock? Um, Aside from uh, the big four, the shows are like three hours now. Yeah. They're back to being two hours and 50 minutes, three hours, 310, whatever. They're yeah, not doing yeah. those, those you know, per ridiculously long shows because it doesn't matter. But, it, but Peacock still measures the hours. They do. Peacock but but whenever the they views. do a press release, they talk about the number of people who watched. 
They don't talk about the streaming hours or anything like that. They talk about well, the Netflix, number of people the thing. that watched. Netflix does, and Amazon does. And again, maybe it just comes down to semantics over what numbers you put out there and how you, you put the, that wording out there. But they may very well want it to be three hours. And the thing is, it's not going to kill Raw necessarily, but it is... It is a it's going to be interesting and they are it's the best thing they can do if they want to rally that stock if they want to do something to energize because what else is there right now for them to do it's going to come down to this deal and a big money offer from Amazon who has basically when it comes to their freebie thing with Judge Judy it ended up being it was like 125 million dollars for like 20 something episodes of that show and they are now they have several shows with her they have Shows that they have spent a lot of money on, you know, short miniseries and things like that and things that they've developed. So the money from the money aspect, it is going to be good. It's just, again, it will be interesting to see the money you make now. Are you going to give away any of it later? Again, this I know it's nerdy business stuff, but it is fascinating to see exactly where Raw will be at that point if it is on Amazon for three, four five years and and where we're at with the whole deal by then. So anyway, we have uh, Rampage, 396,000 and a point twelve, which was uh, going head-to-head with an NBA game. And Battle of the Belts did uh, not well, 351,000.09, lowest 18 to 49 ever for Battle of the Belts because, uh, you know, belts never change. So that's that. There's a lot of stuff on. A lot, and then, a lot of wrestling eyeballs being pulled, the hardcores that night. And then SmackDown, 2.4 million viewers, which was uh, only down slightly from uh, the follow-up to The Rock on Raw. Second highest audience they've done since October 13th and a .64 in 18 to 49. Number one in all of television, including daily sports. So uh, there you go. Gigantic oh. numbers for SmackDown. Speaking of sports, and I don't know, I just I saw a glance at this earlier on. Amazon is apparently coming in to pick up the pieces of the fractured Diamond Sports Group Sinclair Broadcasting spinoff of all those regional sports channels. So again, if you're looking at like how CW has been doing things, where they were openly courting and got the ACC, NASCAR, WWE. They're interested in wrestling and things like that. I mean, again, uh, that that's another one in the Amazon chip of where could Raw be going? Well, Amazon continues to spend and doesn't mind spending on sports. Got uh, Yuji Nagata debuting for MLW, which is coming up for Super Fight in Philadelphia on February 3rd. Yuji Nagata versus Jacob Fatu is on the show, as well as Alex Kane versus Satoshi Kojima for the MLW title, and Mystico versus Averno. Is it 2006? <laughs> but hey, I bet that match will be awesome. So Dragon Roy, hey, Kamiyatachi's making a return, so it kind of is. Did you hear about that one? I did Apparently not. He'll be, uh, Isn't that he'll one of those be... little toys? It's like a little animal. If you don't feed it, it dies. <laughs> That's, well... I guess, you know, that would be uh, what the cat, I, I guess, is. What's the cat's name of Hiromu Takahashi? But, yeah, I guess he's going to be going back to his masked form uh, to celebrate Fantastica Mania. How about that? What are those little toys called? What, the cat? Uh, what was his no, name? No, they're a little toy that, like, you have to feed it or it dies. A Kamagachi? Kama. It looked like a, it looked like something else they recycled. Not it was a like a Furby. They recycled, right? Tamagotchi. Thank Tamagotchi. you. Tamagotchi. What is this? Tamagotchi. You are so old. Tamagotchi. God. Tamagotchi. Get with the program. It's a. What is this? Yeah, I know all about it because Whitney used to have one and she killed it, and she still remembers to this day. Even Lance knows Tamagotchi. When Lance knows, you know you're out to lunch, Mike. Let's see what we got in the uh, text message bin. Then we'll go to the world famous NXT report let's see how does Lance? because he had to have known about this because of his daughters right probably then what how never mind this person says that's why mike hates streaming he's old and loves his remote control 
I have I have YouTube TV. <laughs> well, first off, Jingle, you don't think you have a remote control for streaming nowadays? I was going to say. I what? guess if you're watching on your iPad, but if you're if you're streaming through your TV, there's still a remote control, brother. I am old, though. What, do you just try and think? Huh? Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.